Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. Five Easy Pieces is a 1970 drama film that was directed by Bob Raffleson, and it was written by Carol Eastman and Raffleson together. It stars Jack Nicholson, Karen Black, Susan Anspach, Lois Smith, and Ralph Waite. The storyline goes that Bobby Dupuy has been drifting in his life over the past several years. He currently works as an oil rig worker in Southern California and he partakes in the stereotypical working-class activities that surround his life. He's somewhat brooding and irresponsible, and when he's not cheating on her, he treats his waitress girlfriend, Rayette, very poorly. You see, she's not the brightest bulb on the tree, but she's one that lives by the code that Tammy Wynette set to song. She continually complains to Bobby about his treatment of her, but she still clings to him for dear life. Bobby grew up a real privileged life as Robert, and along with his two siblings, were destined for musical greatness. Robert as a classical pianist. While his siblings followed that path, Robert rebelled against it, and he actually hadn't seen his father in more than three years. He hears from his sister, that his father has suffered a couple of strokes, which has rendered him semi-comatose. Bobby, with Rayette tagging along, much to his chagrin, decide to return to his home, where he grew up, and where his father and two siblings still live, just to visit his father. The reunion, which includes seeing his siblings' current lives, provides the stepping stone for what Bobby decides to do in the next immediate phase of his life. He eventually considers running towards things instead of running away from something for the first time in a long time. When you first hear the title, Five Easy Pieces, you think that this is referring to the women that he is betting in this film, but it's not. The title is based on a book of piano exercises that he owned as a child. Jack Nicholson was pretty involved in the production, insomuch that he added dialogue that was used when he ended up talking to his father. And the moment at the end of the diner scene, where Bobby sweeps all the glasses off the table after arguing with the waitress, was inspired by Jack Nicholson actually doing this himself once at a coffee shop. This happened at a coffee shop called Poopies that was on the Sunset Strip, and he became mad when they took his coffee away, despite him only having just arrived. All of this because the group of fellow actors that he had joined had been there for hours, and they were being told to leave by the manager. Early drafts of the script allude to the death of Bobby's mother as a major catalyst for the wayward behavior that he had and his estrangement from his remaining family. In the movie, she isn't mentioned at all, and the reasons for his estrangement are really vague. It's thought that Bobby is likely to be based, in part, on the actual director, Bob Raffleson. His first draft of the screenplay before it was revised by Carol Eastman, was described as autobiographical. And many of the clothes that Nicholson wears in the film are actually the director's own clothes, including a black turtleneck that he owned since his college days at Dartmouth. You'll see Jack Nicholson's character of Bobby drinking a particular type of beer. That beer is Lucky Light Draft Beer, and it's in a can. It was really brewed by the General Brewing Company of San Francisco. There are a few parts of the film where the director and Jack Nicholson butted heads, and one was how to play the climactic scene where Bobby talks to his father. The director wanted Nicholson to break down in tears, but Nicholson didn't want to. They just decided to let the scene play out and to see what happened, and Nicholson did indeed cry. 
There was only one take that was done and shot for that scene. In the original ending, Bobby's character is seen driving his car off a bridge with his girlfriend Rayette surviving the crash, but he doesn't make it. They chose to put a different ending in it, but it's just about as dramatic and surprising. The movie's earlier scenes were shot in California, but the majority of it was filmed in the Pacific Northwest, with most of it occurring on Vancouver Island in British Columbia, with additional photography happening in Florence and Portland, Oregon. The film's diner sequence, in which Bobby pesters the waitress, all was filmed at a Denny's along Interstate 5 near Eugene, Oregon. In 2022, Sally Struthers, who plays one of the love interests of Bobby, revealed that the director coerced her into appearing nude on the set. She argued with him about this, and it went against her wishes, but he promised her that he would cut out all of the completely nude scenes that she filmed, but he didn't. She felt very betrayed by his actions. At the onset of the film, we end up meeting a man that Jack Nicholson plays who has an offhandedness that brought the film Easy Rider to life. In the first marvelous scenes in the movie, the director calls our attention to the grimy life textures and the shabby hopes of these decent middle Americans. They live in a landscape of jealousy, dust, TV dinners, motels, and highways, and they seem to have nothing else in life going on. Bobby's friends seem to be arrested in their development, both emotionally and mentally, at about the age of 17. The film bears its heart in the scenes that happen on the island, where Bobby makes an awkward effort to communicate with his dying father. The island is inhabited with eccentrics, mostly Bobby's own family, but it does include a few strays. What matters is the character during the time covered in the film is seen when Bobby tentatively reapproaches his past and then he rejects it, not out of pride, but out of fear. Jack Nicholson does an excellent job at this character and you feel like he never had to force anything. He didn't have to. He fit perfectly in this role. Take a look back at this classic from 1970. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.